There's been a lot of debate recently over transgender athletes competing against females in sports. That debate reignited after three new stories emerged on the issue. First, former and current British Olympians are calling for the International Olympic Committee to suspend their guidelines for transgender athletes until further research is conducted. Some saying it can, quote, never be fair to allow transgender athletes who have been through male puberty to compete in female sports. And there's now a discrimination complaint in Minnesota against USA Powerlifting and its policies after the organization told a transgender lifter she was not able to compete in women's events because she's biologically a man. Lastly, a transgender track athlete saying she does not have advantages over her biologically female competitors. And in fact, she says she is at the disadvantage. If anything, me competing against cisgender um, females is a disadvantage because mm -hmm. my body is going on going through so many uh, medical implications, like it's going through biochemistry changes. Um, so being on, you know, hormone replacement therapy, it uh, it gives you it. So it, you, your your muscle depletion, your muscle is deteriorating. Mm -hmm. um, you lose a lot of strength because you know testosterone is where you get your your strength, your agility, all of right. that um, athletic stuff. Um, so I have to t work twice as hard to keep that strength. And if I slack a day, that's like three days set behind. Okay, so Jesse, I wanted to start with you. So the IOC's policy basically states that any transgender can compete in the as a female athlete, even without surgery, as long as their testosterone levels are a certain a certain amount below a certain amount. Isn't that reducing a very complex issue to some random tiny data point? Well, the thing about sports that's unifying is the rules. You have rules in place to promote fair sportsmanlike competition. And all these rules are physical. You can see a shot clock. There's lines on the field. You touch that toe to the line, you're out. There are people classified through weight or through age and boxing and wrestling and all those things are physical and these other people are coming in and they're trying to introduce something not physical to this arena which is gender identity and what I think that's going to do is cr not allow a level playing field for other women and if you have biologically born men competing against women you're going to see domination by these uh, athletes in track and field, or swimming, or basketball. You're going to see more instances of doping to kind of compete against the biologically born men. You're going to see, I think, complaints. You're going to see more politics involved. I think there's going to be more blowouts, more injuries. There's going to be less audience attendance because no one wants to watch a blowout. You want to see fair, close competition. So at the end of the day, if it's only, like less than 0.1% of the population, that's saying, you're being unfair to me, so you have to change all the rules to help me. I think they're the ones who are being unfair to everybody else. And I feel bad for a transgender person. If you're born as a man and internally you feel like you're a woman, that's a tough struggle. But I just don't see how you can make that whole with the rest of the sporting industry. And Dana, Jesse mentioned, uh, you know, gender identity and whatnot. Sexual orientation is a protected class in Minnesota. So going back to that lawsuit I mentioned, where do you see the courts going with this? Bigger picture, like Jesse said, or do you think they'll focus on the? I, I don't know. I, I don't know where it will go. I hope they do decide pretty decisively and in favor of biologically born women, because women have worked way too hard for so many decades to end up in this situation. Martina Navratilova, the tennis star, came out and said, well, let's back up. She is a very strong advocate for LGBTQ uh, issues. She came out and said, it would not be fair for me to have to compete against uh, a transgender man going to a woman. I'm sorry if I don't get all of the things straight. I think the other, con and then what happened to her is she got attacked trolled by all of these people coming after her saying that she's insensitive she's not that's not right they went after her terribly and these people that are advocating for transgender athletes it's they seem to spend a lot of time attacking and trolling other women mm -hmm. who are suggesting that at least could we at least talk about this for half a second as if, the, if, if as if that's not allowed the other consequence jesse of this is not just that you will see all of those things that you mentioned i also think it will cause young women drop out yeah. why would you continue to compete if you always know you're going to lose because of somebody who is 50 percent stronger it's disheartening than you? Yeah. totally greg you hate sports so i thought it would be a good <laughs> objective viewpoint to weigh in that's so cute i wrote i hate sports, sports. right here <laughs> we know you so uh, well. 
I talk, so I talked to, talk to an athlete who go, shall remain nameless, who is upset about this issue, but says, I live in a society where I can't say so. Jeez. Mm. And she's not talking about Russia or Cuba, mm -hmm. but America. Right. To the point that transgender activists use accusations of bigotry and homophobia, even yep. against gays and lesbians, yep. to prevent <clears throat> this actual scientific, factual debate about the differences in, in, in the, the actual sex differences that every, every biologist knows is there and true, the size of the, the, the just the amount of muscle mass. Um, you know, I doubt anybody changes their gender to win a medal. Uh, you know what I mean? But the fact is, this is an obviously biological fact that we are living through right now. And the, and the only way to deny that is through intimidation and politics. There's a big issue going on that's tangential to this. There are young children, when they express gender confusion, the push among these same activists is to transition these confused children at a young age to the hetero sex. Meaning if you have a young boy with feminine qualities, you need to transition that person person into a female so that person would then become straight what you're effectively doing is you're eliminating gays because experts will tell you a young boy with feminine traits might just grow up to be a healthy gay man who lives a long life instead you're going to push him in a direction that requires decades of drugs decades of therapy and possibly surgery and higher rates of depression and suicide. So the left, interestingly enough, abhorred those organizations like Exodus. Do you remember Exodus that would take gay people and try to yeah. deprogram yeah. them? Yeah. They hated them and pr probably for good reason. Where are they yep. in this destructive practice of plucking confused kids who may grow out of a phase or may end up becoming gay or lesbian and, and, and saying, no, it's better for them to become uh, 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 a transgender female or male, knowing that this could be could end up years and years of pain and suffering. Sports and childhood are being affected by what is a, an intense political activism, mm. and it scares the crap out of people. It's scaring the crap out of liberals more than anybody because, I mean, gays and lesbians are are, are the ones that are getting hit probably the hardest on this. Mm. Anyway, one. Uh, one, kind of touching on Jesse's closing point, uh, is this just another effort to ensure equality that ends up skewing it so that it's completely unequal? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm confused by this whole thing. It's complicated. I don't think I have the answer. I will say that I don't think it's easy to pick up on Greg's point. I don't think anybody is going to say, I'm going to change my sex in order to win a medal. I just, mm -hmm. I think it's hard to go through life given the world I live in, knowing the kind of stereotypes, the slurs towards people who have any kind of sexual confusion in this world. Um, but I will say this, I think of this a little differently. I don't not, do not think of it in terms of politics like the rest of my colleagues here, because to me, like for example, Michael Phelps has these huge feet. Do I think, oh, it's unfair for him to swim because he's able to push off in that way? Do I think, if I said to you, Oh, I think it's unfair for Wilt Chamberlain to play basketball because he's so tall, Emily. Gosh, he's really tall. Or I think it's unfair, uh, you know, for somebody who's really muscular, much more muscular. How about those Ethiopian runners winning all these long distance races? Gee, where do they train? Look at how they're built. They have short upper bodies and these very long right. legs. But that's a great, no, you're, I agree with you. I, I, I act, what you're saying is absolutely right, that sports inherently is unfair. I can't play in the NBA, unfortunately, and I've tried. However, what you're saying is, why not then, why can't everybody augment themselves? For well, that's what the question, so you yeah. remember the guy who wore the prosthetics yes. to run? I right. still yeah. think, and, I and so the question, different. and I think they said finally, you know, you can't do this. You can't run with special device, right. even though you have suffered a legitimate disability. Right. So to me, it's a lot like that. I just want to keep it as fair, as Jesse was saying, as possible. I don't see it as left or right. I, to me, I wish I could see more clearly on this, because I'd like to give everybody a chance to compete. You and I agree. I agree that sports is terrible. Right? <laughs> sports is terrible. No, I didn't say that. Why did you say that? All right. All right. We got to go. Okay.